Recently, Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle Chomp Champs just came out. And as the sucker for all things Pac-Man related, I got the digital deluxe version, which means I can play the game seven days early just for you. Brought back from the ashes of a dead online-only service comes a game that returns to the online-only platform to hopefully not die again. Starting off as a Stadia exclusive in 2020, retailing for $19.99, but had multiple free demos, Pac-Man Mega Tunnel Battle was quite a popular game on the service, taking the Battle Royale formula and applying it to Pac-Man's gameplay. After Stadia was shut down, it seemed the game was gonna be lost media. But don't worry, literally two days after the announcing of the death of Pac-Man 99, we got an announcement for Chomp Champs. And I'm really glad to see this game can live on and the developer's hard work won't go to waste. My name is the Blue Pixeling. Hey Tay, I heard you were talking about Pac-Man. Tay? Tay? Hmm. Oh well. I wanted to talk about how this game was advertised. As I feel like a build-up to the game is just as important as the game itself. So, two days after Pac-Man 99 was shut down, an announcement for Chomp Champs officially came out on October 10th, 2023. Two more days later, on the night of October 12th, Chomp Champs was promoted in a pretty cool drone light show in New York City, New York. Furthermore, on April 29th, 2024, the Pac-Man account started posting these strange Chomp Champ cards to promote the game every other day or so. And finally on May 5th, I actually noticed that the official Pac-Man account said they snuck in a secret code into their Chomp Champ cards, and the first 20 people to tell them via DMs would obtain a free code for the game. Now, after I learned, we quickly worked together finding the hidden letters, and, well, the rest is history. So yeah, the first card has an H. Okay. The second card has a P. The next one has an A. It's the next one, C. And oh my god. The last one was an M. HP. Wait. Well, it's not, wait. I think we have to re. Wait. If we have to rearrange the letters, right? Yes. Champ. Well, Champ. Yes. It's Champ. Oh my god. Sadly, Tay, the Eternal Sufferer, almost didn't make it due to Twitter's hatred for him. You gotta DM them the answer. Anyway, that's all I wanted to cover regarding the game's advertising. I'll see you all on the flip side. Pixeling, out! But yes, to finish Blue's story, we were in fact one of the first 20 people to get in, and we got the game! Anyway, let's talk about... While I'm not going to cover every single difference from the Stadia version, I do think it's a good idea to mention a few major differences throughout this video. For one, the UI has a complete overhaul, taking a more, dare I say, Fortnite lobby type of look? It's not bad, but I do find it quite funny. The gameplay breaks down to eating more than your opponents and trying to either eat them or outlast them. And I don't know if I'm only being matched up with bots or if I'm just that good, but if you're paying attention and if you're on your toes, it's actually quite easy to win. I mean, so easy to the point where I'm just minding my own business and bam, I won. I do have one life though, so I still gotta be careful. All right, we're doing it. But, but what? <laughs> Wait, no, but what gets me the most is that this is a ranked match. Nobody encountered me. I was just doing my thing. Granted, I am playing this early, so I'm sure things will become tougher when it opens up to everyone around the world. Okay, so I checked, and after reviewing my footage, there are quite a lot of bots, and the easiest way to tell if you're matched up with one is by checking the icon next to their name. If there's a controller or a PC next to it, then it's real. Or the obvious tell is the name itself. So is everybody else who is alive just bots? <laughs> is that what that means? I don't think so. All the, all the remaining players were bots. Shut up. Shut up. Actually, wait, I can check the footage and see right now if it was really bots or I'm coping insanely hard. I'm not coping. I'm not coping. Oh no. Ain't nobody naming themselves mundane stranger. Oh no. Certain friend. Oh no. Flat juice. Snake eyes. Vile club. Shadow. AIT. Psycho Vantis. Savok. Batman. Sonic Fox. Metal. Mia Noodles. Oh God, no. No, this is, that's all the Pac-Man lobbies are. Now, at the time of making this video, there are only two gameplay modes, which are Elimination and Ranked. So let's talk about those. 
Elimination is your typical battle royale where you and 63 other players run around and try to gather points to prevent your maze from being erased. You eat others, do missions, and obviously survive. What's nice is you get multiple lives to start off with, and some leeway when responding, so you can always have an opportunity to escape. What's cool is the ability to friend others, host a group, and have your friends join you. By the way, I'd like to give a big thanks to my friends for staying up really late to help me gather footage of this. The only weird thing about having your friends join is that there's almost no incentive to do so? I mean, don't get me wrong, having the boys together is great, but when your friends join a game, they're no different than the other players in the lobby. I mean, you can eat them and use items to help or harm them, but other than that, you really can't do much together. And this brings me to my greatest criticism of the game. As an online-only game, I feel this is a bit of a missed opportunity to have modes specific to how many people are playing. It sounds silly, but having lobbies for duos, trios, and full groups would push more people to play or at the very least, let players who group up earn extra experience. One way we work around this is after grouping up, we find each other in the maze and raise up the singular level of one maze really high, ensuring that nobody can KO us. Hi, bro. Hey, you're here, hey, bro, good to see you. All right, so remember our plan, okay? We gotta work together, all right? Eventually, we have to chase each other around, but it feels good to gang up on some poor fool who decided to invade on our maze. Although I do think it would be nice where eliminated players could become ghosts to chase others, if you do get eliminated early, you get the opportunity to spectate with others, and every few minutes or so, you and the other spectators get to group vote on what power-ups spawn next, which I think is a pretty nice addition. Now, ranked mode is just like elimination mode, with the only main difference being that you can't invite friends, nor can you vote for items when you're eliminated. I can kick people from the party? Oh god. Bye! Ah! <laughs> the only requirement to play in ranked is reaching a level of 10. And unless I'm missing something, this plays exactly like the elimination mode. While it is a fun mode, I think rank could benefit from being a bit more difficult, such as reducing the lives to one, and maybe making the game a bit faster from the get-go. Other than that, I look forward to climbing the ranks and seeing how good I can get. One more thing that's really new to this game is the music. So in the Stadia version, this game was surprisingly silent during gameplay. Nice job, Namco. This goes hard. Real hard. But in Chomp Champs, we have three original new songs. That being Ghost House, Energizer Olympics, and my personal favorite, Maze Runner. If you like the music, I have it all uploaded on my second channel. Now, let's talk about the power-ups. In the Stadia version, there were power-ups, but as soon as you touched one, it would automatically trigger. But Chomp Champs adds a new layer of skill by letting you store up to two items in the boxes if you hold the corresponding button while touching them. Now, most of these may seem pretty gimmicky or situational, but let me tell you, this mechanic alone is already a game changer for me because you can now play really aggressively or defensively depending on your situation. To start, the items break into two categories, good and bad, but even the bad ones can be useful if you're resourceful. So think outside the box. Good power-ups are the items you see in the bluish white orbs. There are extra lives, which are pretty self-explanatory. The speedy pack item will make you faster. Super p -p -p pack power. Ghost repel makes it where the ghost will actively run away from you if they're in your vicinity. The shield item makes you completely invincible to all ghosts and even other Pac-Man trying to eat you. Right, I know how I'm gonna take care of you real quick. Ready? Check it. Really? Yeah. Nah! <laughs> <laughs> One downside is that even if the ghosts are scared, you still can't eat them due to the shield being active, so keep that in mind. One advantage the shield does have is, while it can be used defensively, one good offensive trick is to bump ghosts into other players, turning them into a sort of projectile. <gasps> the Dazer has got to be one of the most evil items out there, and I love it. After activation, it pretty much makes everyone in the maze stop and be stunned for a solid five seconds. Well, uh, do you have any last words, Ryan? <laughs> Alright, just 8,000 more points, and I will get that achievement. No! No achievement for you. Nah! Nah! I we ain't doing I this! See, I see the- I see, I see the vision here. Oh, That was close, buddy. You almost got your hand- <gasps> No! Now for the bad power-ups. Those are the items that you see in the red orbs. These items include things like Speedy Ghost, which speeds them up significantly. 
and ghosts attract, which draws them closer to you on purpose. Well, since you want them to follow you oh, so much, no, 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 how no, about no, you no. go? <laughs> oh. Again, at the time of making this review, this is strictly a paid game with no purchasable currency, which is a good thing in my opinion. The only currency you get is from playing the game, and that's how all games should be. As someone who got the digital deluxe version, I got some pretty cool outfits. But again, your mileage will only vary based on your taste. Same goes for the mazes, which will vary in themes. While the Galaga, Mr. Driller, and Dig Dug ones look cool, I do wish we got more themed mazes like we did in Pac-Man 99, as a lot of these do feel pretty generic, but I do appreciate them visually. Finally, we have the emotes, which are a nice touch, but I'm not gonna lie, they look very awkward, and in my opinion, I think having a face appear over your Pac-Man would convey the emotes better, as right now this looks kinda unfinished. Maybe it's just a Switch version, because I notice that things tend to look a lot better on PC. Hey, so Tayum Post here, and I was right. Yeah, uh, the Switch version does look considerably worse. Uh, not to a extremely noticeable degree, but something like these emotes here, um, if I show on the top and the bottom, it's kinda night and day the quality. I don't know why. Something as these little JPEGs are so crusty on the Switch. This not only includes just the stickers, but also the models. But there you have it. So if you want the best looking version of the game, obviously go for PC. At the time of this video, this game retails for $19.99 with the digital deluxe version costing $29.99. And while I do enjoy this game, I will be honest, I was expecting a bet more. There's only two modes in this game. But if you're the kind of person who wants to climb the leaderboards and finish those achievements, then be my guess. There's more than enough to keep yourself busy. Now, I know game development is not easy, and higher-ups calling the shots can only make things more difficult. But I will leave my own humble suggestions here if Namco or someone happens to come across this video. I think having private lobbies for friends would be a nice addition to the game. Or making a mode where all your friends can work together in a lobby would help keep the game enjoyable. And since teamwork is a driving force that brings back people long after a game has been launched, I really think something like that should be added. Now, believe me, I have a hatred for online-only games for a reason, as so many have been shut down due to poor sales, unexpected complications, or out-of-company greed. So I beg this game lasts for many years to come, because I believe the world needs more Pac-Man. Overall, Pac-Man Chomp Champs is a pretty decent battle royale game with some rough edges, but it comes in a nice package. If the devs are allowed to continue working on it, I hope to see more additions and improvements throughout the years. So, if you made it this far in the video, I'd like to say thanks for watching! If Chomp Champs gets any significant updates in the future, I'll be sure to make a follow-up video. In the meantime, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and my socials are below if you ever want to chat. Thanks to all my amazing Kofi members who helped keep this channel alive, and remember, stay foxy. I'll do better than that. I'll have mustard on you.